Welcome to the introduction to telecommunications and network security. My name is Liz von der Heiden. Telecommunications and network security is the most extensive domain in the common body of knowledge for the Certified Information System Security Professional Examination. The CISSP candidate must have a thorough knowledge of the various networking models, protocols, standards, and services. In this video, we are going to discuss the OSI or Open Systems Interconnection Model. The International Standards Organization developed the OSI model in 1984. The OSI model is a set of protocols that define and standardize the data communications process. The OSI model is a concept that describes how data communication should take place in a networking environment. It divides the processes into seven groups called layers. And these layers are application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and the physical layer. You memorize them by using this phrase, all people seem to need data processing. As you can see in this graph, it displays the communication path of the OSI model. So the data travels down from the application layer to the physical layer. Then once the physical layer receives the data, it gets transmitted across the network, then passes on from the application layer to the physical layer. Let's begin with the application layer, layer seven. This is the top layer. It is the one that's closest to the user because it provides user interface and supports application running in the network. This is the layer that applications talk to. So remember, um, remember this when you're surfing on the internet or sending emails on the web. It is also the layer that is responsible for synchronization of communications. Protocols that function at the application layers are FTP, HTTP, this is what applications you use when you go to the World Wide Web, the IMAP, and the SMTP, which is what you use when you send and receive emails across the internet. Another layer is the presentation layer, layer six. This layer is responsible for encryption and data conversion. It is the translator of the, ne the network making sure that the data is in the correct form. And also it acts like a waiter in a restaurant. When you go to the waiter, you order your food and then the waiters brings you the food. So this is similar to that because this presentation layer delivers and present data to the application layer. Several protocols that fall under the presentation layers are ASCII, EBDC, DIC, GIF, and JPEG. Session layer or layer five. So think of this layer as when you're making telephone calls. This layer is responsible for starting, maintaining, and closing communication sessions. So when you make a call and then when you talk to your friend or somebody on the phone and then when you and think of it when you hang up this is the same concept so these layers provide synchronization between computers and it also maintain it's it's also responsible for application to application communication because it controls the process that exchange of data and coordinates the interaction between them. Several protocols that fall under these layers are Telnet, NFS, SQL, and RPC. 
transport layer or layer four. Think of it as a bus. The bus transport passengers from point A to point B. Transport layer is a similar concept because it provides end-to-end -end transmission. And it makes sure that the data transfer is completed and that the data is sent and received between two computers successfully. It also hand handles error checking and recovery. It's, this layer has the responsibility to ask for retransmission if the data is sent incorrectly. You will find TCP and UDP and SPX protocols under this layer. The network layer is the layer three. It handles the translation of the logical address into the physical addresses. And it also provides network routing and flow control functions across the network. It sends messages and reports errors regarding the packet delivery. The protocols at the network layers are IP, IPX, RIP, ICMP, ARP, and then RARP. Data link layer, layer two. It handles the physical transfer framing and flow control. This is where the data is organized into frames. The data link is responsible for stripping off the header of the data frame, leaving a data packet which passes up to the network layer. Remember that the data link is responsible for ensuring that messages are delivered to the proper devices across the link. These layers consist of two sublayers, the LLC, logical link control, and the MAC, which is the media access control. LLC is a sublayer that operates between the network layer above and the MAC sublayer below. This layer controls the flow of the information and error checking. MAC controls how devices on the network gain access to the system. Several protocols that fall under the data link are SLIP, PPP, and L2F. The lowest layer is layer one, which is the physical layer. Deals with data. So this, uh, the physical layer does not understand application. It's more, it's, it deals with ones and zeros. and it provides electrical and mechanical interfaces. So it, is, it specifies how signals are transmitted and received within the network. And physical layers does not deal with protocols, but rather deals with the physical components such as hubs, repeaters, and cables. In conclusion, we have discussed that the OSI model is a concept that describes how data communicates between systems and application in a networking environment, and they consist of seven layers. In this graph, you will see the seven layers, the data units, and the functions that are associated with these layers. For more videos, please visit us at levo.group. Thank you for listening.